So what's up everybody? Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. I hope y'all are uh, preparing to spend time with your families and uh, enjoy the beauty and the gift that is family. Uh, count your blessings while we're here. Hug your loved ones while they're here. Give them their flowers while they're here. Uh, it may be imperfect, but you know, love anyhow because that's what makes us all family. Uh, so that's my Thanksgiving greeting. I did want to come on here to share Jesus uh, with you and maybe give you some ammunition and some keys uh, on how to have talking points with maybe say your family and friends that you're hanging out with today. Um, I was thinking, just thinking, because I'm always thinking about the gospel, always uh, you know, studying it for myself and just making sure that I'm always solid in it for myself. Uh, you know, first. And one of the things I was thinking, question came back around the circle back, back around in my mind is why in the world did Jesus have to die? You know, why did God have to send his son to die on the cross and raise? What does that have to do with me? Well, I thought of this video in order to help a fish, you have to swim because in order to help anything in its natural habitat, you naturally have to become like that thing especially if you are different if you're a human and say a fish somehow needs some kind of assistance that we can provide we're gonna have to put on diving gear or at the least jump in the water to help the fish out um and you know humans they naturally walk on land they're not sea mammals they're land mammals so we don't naturally water is in our natural habitat uh, but we do have the ability to swim and to learn how to swim and that's how we can help say you know an aquatic animal so think about this guys god is a spirit the bible says god is a spirit those that worship god must worship him in spirit and in truth so what is the death burial resurrection of jesus the birth of jesus the life of jesus have to do with us why does a man who was a Jew dying on a Roman crucifix have anything to do with me as a human? Well, this is why. Because that man is God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Word of God says in John chapter one, that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. So God was already pre-existent with his father already from the beginning. God and the son are one and the same. Uh, just like I'm one with my dad because we are we are human. God is God. So, you know, just do some math there. If I'm human and my dad, you know, I came from my dad, I'm a human. God is God. He had a son. His son is literally God. So that's a little bit crash course on the oneness of God. How? It, so anyways, God sends his son, who is also spirit, to earth in the flesh and blood body of a man to help out man that has been separated from him it wasn't always at the beginning because at the beginning everything was good as a matter of fact when humanity was created that was the only thing of god's creation that god said was very good so in the beginning man was good in the beginning man was good why was man good in the beginning? Because God made man good in the beginning. How did man become bad? How did man become separated? Because God gave a command. He said, you can eat of all the trees in this garden except this one. Because in the day that you eat of it, you're going to surely die. Did they die physically? No, they didn't die physically. But the death that they did suffer was the separation from God. Because God said not to do something. And they chose with their God-given choice to do opposite of what God instructed. And that, in essence, was a death. It was a spiritual death, a disconnection of man and God for the first time. Up to that point, they were one, but God did give us choice to do what we wanted to do. And so, you know, consequently, you know, man sinned and, and all of us were affected. Some people think that that's messed up, but if you think about it, it's really not. If, if, um, I'm, I'm just going, if, if, if a mother and a father have uh, HIV or AIDS, 
and they already infected. Now there's medical advances now to where you can have a kid that's not affected uh, and is protected from your disease, but let's take it before the advances of medicine. That kid is coming out with, with HIV and it's gonna continue. If there are no medical advances, HIV will be something that's running in the line of that family forever. Sin is humanity's HIV or AIDS. And unless somebody that's outside of the line of our human family comes in, steps in to save us and protect us from what is within us, then we won't be saved. So we're all affected by one man's decision. But the good news is, is the Bible says that by one man sin entered the world. And so death passed from one man to all men. There is one man to where righteousness once again came into the world. And by his righteousness, righteousness can pass to all men. And that man is Jesus. Why did Jesus need to come and die? Well, we already covered the fact that God sent his only begotten son into the world in the likeness of sinful flesh. So he sent himself, he sent his son into the world, God in flesh. That's what Jesus Emmanuel means, God with us. He came in flesh. He came, he's God, he lived a perfect life. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he wasn't born through our line. It's just like, I have a son, his name is Jaden. His birthday is today, so y'all wish him a happy birthday in the comments. Jaden is my son, but then, then again, Jaden is not my son. Jaden is my son because for all intents and purposes, he is basically adopted. I married his mother, he, and he is his mother's and his father's child. But by virtue of marriage, he's basically adopted into my family. And so I care for him and everything. And I'm stepping in where his father is not. And so I'm his support system. I'm the one that provides a roof over his head and many other things like get him birthday gifts and gives him love and, and encouragement, which is something I'm, you know, constantly working on. But, you know, so so take that. And then you take uh, what I was saying with Jesus. All right. So and, and also I have a daughter. I have two daughters, by the way. They are completely of my blood. So Jaden and Zoe and Riley are brothers and sisters. They are connected by blood, specifically by the blood of their mother. They're not connected by me because Jaden didn't come from me. I state that to, to say this. Jesus is connected to humanity by blood. We are connected to Jesus by blood. We are literally connected to Jesus by blood. Jesus came here. He lived 33 years on this life as a human, being fully God and fully man. The Bible also says that by one blood, God made all of us. Realize that it's, it's a big deal for God to be born on this earth as a man. He literally has human blood. I'm just saying, go there, sit there for a minute and think about that. The Bible says God sent his only begotten son to the earth. He has human blood. But he's totally different from us. He's a, he's a different being. He's God. So it's just like my son. My son is a child just like my daughters are children. However, my daughters are a totally different being than my son. One, because my son is a male and my daughters are females but two because my daughters come from a different place they come from me my son comes from another man Jesus came from God he's God in the flesh we came from Adam we're just man but we're all connected 
by blood. Just like my son and my daughters are connected by blood. It doesn't matter that it came from a different man. The fact about the matter is, is that humanity is connected by blood. So let me speed this up. So Jesus, because he came, lived and died, has been included in history. God has been included in the history of man. There was a perfect man that came from God, came, lived. Yes, he taught. And he's more than a teacher. He came, lived a perfect life and then died. Why did he need to die? Because it's appointed to all men to die once. That's what the Bible says, that for once it's appointed to all men to die. He was made under the law. Wages of sin is death. And when I talk about sin, I'm not talking about categoric sin like, oh, you stole a piece of bubble gum, you murdered somebody, you know, we all sin. No, the Bible says that God sent his son into the world for sin. He's made of a woman, made under the law and made for sin. This is not talking about, oh, I, I, I murdered somebody or oh, I had sex out of wedlock or, or oh, some specific sin. No, this is talking about God sending God, God sending his son, God, Jesus, God, the son in the flesh to address the problem of sin. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that death reigned from Adam to Moses. Basically, from Adam to Moses, there was no law. There was no law saying you should not commit adultery. You shouldn't lie. Uh, you should have no other gods before me. Basically, the Ten Commandments didn't exist before uh, before Moses. So death reigned from Adam to Moses. And then when the law came, it was just to make everything worse. So now there's a there's a there's a sin principle. There's a law principle, but you really can't you know, catch a charge for anything. It's like I use this example all the time. If I run a red light, if there's no law uh, against running a red light, if there's no law that says stop at a stop sign, if there's no law that says don't murder, I can do these things and I can't catch a charge for these things that I do. Why? Because there's no law against these things. So I'm not breaking a law. It's like, oh, that's messed up. But all in all, I'm not breaking a law. But when the law comes in, then I can catch a charge. Then I can go to jail for committing a certain crime because there are levels and there are degrees. It still doesn't change the fact that the wages of sin is death because we die because of sin. We die because we've fallen short of God. We die because we're separated from God. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we die because we're separated from God because we chose and actually we chose the good thing. It wasn't a bad thing. The Bible says that Eve looked at the tree and saw that it was good for food. It was the good that made her sin against God because she was trying to get something good for herself. It wasn't that she was even trying to do something bad. But it was the good that enticed her. Keep that in mind. It was the good that enticed her. But to wrap this up, Jesus had to come and die because God sent a solution. If you're going to help a fish, you got to get in its habitat. You got to swim. God wanted to help us out. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die as a man for sin. To address the problem of sin. Condemn sin in the flesh. He was raised, he was, he was delivered for our sins, the Bible says, and he was raised up for our justification. The reason why Jesus Christ is the only way to God is because Jesus Christ is the only one that has perfect relationship with God. He's the only one that actually made it to heaven legally. He did everything right. And he was born of another. If we do everything right, we're still affected by sin. We weren't born to address the problem of sin. Jesus was. So there is no other there's no other way that can save us. There's nothing else that can save us. Jesus is our answer because he's the one that has perfect relationship with the father. I said a lot. I'm going to end it here. But uh, think about that. Go over this video. Consider what I said. Believe in Jesus. Trust in him because he's the answer.